When the Smith brothers completed their epic first powered flight from England to Australia, it was not only the Australian public who manifested an interest in their achievement. On the 23rd of March 1920, the Vickers Vimy was due to land in Adelaide when local pilot Harry Butler in his small monoplane, the Red Devil, was waiting to escort the larger plane in. He had taken off from Enfield in the northern suburbs at 1pm and the Vickers Vimy appeared about 50 minutes later. At Balhanna, a small town in the Adelaide Hills, Hubert Norman Wicks was outside in his nursery watching Butler fill in time by performing acrobatics in the cloudless sky overhead. As he enjoyed the performance, his eyes were suddenly drawn to something flying much higher than the little red plane. Mr Wicks, who was born in 1889 and passed away in 1973, was a nurseryman and horticulturist whose contributions to the fruit industry in South Australia over many years were rewarded with an OBE in 1952. In 1914, he and a partner had established one of the first fruit cold stores at Balhanna. He had held the posts of Vice Chairman of the Royal Agricultural and Horticultural Society and President of the SA Fruit Growers Association, and had lectured and made films on fruit growing for the industry. Many years later, he wrote about his sighting to the Advertiser newspaper, which published it on the 25th of February 1947. He claimed he saw two large black objects travelling at terrific speed on a parallel course going from north to south. Although they were very high, their speed was such that it made the monoplane appear stationary in comparison. At first Wicks thought his eyes might be playing tricks on him. Then he spoke later to his foreman who was half a mile away at the time of the sighting. The foreman asked, what were those two black things that passed Butler's machine? Additional confirmation was provided when that evening Wicks's father-in-law, Mr William Wern James, remarked on the two black things. All three men had seen them and their descriptions and direction of travel tallied exactly. Wicks concluded his account by saying the objects were too solid to be a form of mirage. Mr Wicks was presumably prompted to write to the newspaper in response to a story they carried in their edition of the 7th of February 1947. At 9am on the morning of the 5th of February, three men working at the Commonwealth Railways workshop at Port Augusta had seen five egg-shaped objects, either white or light pink in colour, which had flown over them at an estimated 6,000 feet at great speed. One of the witnesses, Ron Ellis, who had served in the Royal Australian Air Force during the Second World War, estimated that they were the size of locomotives and the light they gave off was bright enough to cast shadows. A fourth man independently saw them from the same location. The government astronomer, Mr Dodwell, said the objects could not have been meteorites, but what they were was a complete mystery to him. On the 17th of February, a letter was published which had been written by a farmer named Flavel from Locke, 225 kilometres southwest of Port Augusta. Returning from feeding his pigs between 7 and 8 in the morning, he saw the same or similar objects. He called his wife, who also saw the oblong-shaped objects. Of course, none of the people knew what they had seen, and they were unable to use the term flying saucers, because it did not yet exist. The first report of a flying saucer was made by Kenneth Arnold in the United States on the 24th of June 1947, some months after the Australian sightings, and 27 years after the objects seen over Balhanna in 1920. It has been suggested that the two black objects were planes flown by Captains Moore and Loftus, which were also to escort the Vickers Vimy into Adelaide. However, why could none of the witnesses distinguish those planes when they could discern that of Butler's with ease? And how could they have been travelling so fast? From contemporary reports, it is not even certain the other two planes even flew over the hills, but rather met the Vickers Vimy near the hills, as they were reported to be performing acrobatics over the Enfield Aerodrome for the waiting crowd when the expected plane was first sighted. Moore was flying a de Havilland. Loftus's plane was not described, but at other times he flew a Sopwith. Did unknown objects provide their own escort for the record-making plane? The answer is known only in the dark corners of history.